Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Ledger Backup Pack to manage and backup your crypto holdings. So let's get started. So if you've hit the ledger.com homepage lately, you'll notice that they're featuring the Ledger Backup Pack. Now, this is a great solution for managing and backing up your cryptocurrency. The Ledger Nano X is the top-of-the-line flagship product of the Ledger hardware cryptocurrency wallet line. It has lots of storage so that you can manage multiple cryptocurrencies, and it also has battery power and mobile support for managing your crypto on the go. So if you want a full and flexible cryptocurrency hardware wallet, the Ledger Nano X is the way to go. But it's also smart to have a backup device in case something happens to your Ledger Nano X, in case it's lost, damaged, or stolen. You want to have a backup ready to go at a moment's notice. Now you could buy another Ledger Nano X and use that as your mirror backup, but the Ledger Nano S Plus is a great cost-effective solution. It has almost as much storage as the Ledger Nano X. It just lacks the battery features and the mobile support. But it comes in at a much lower price point. So having a Ledger Nano X as your go-to device and the Ledger Nano S Plus as your backup mirror device is a great solution for managing and backing up your crypto. Now, if you purchase a Ledger Nano X or any product in the Ledger line and set it up, you're going to be writing down your 24-word recovery phrase. That is your backup in case something happens to the device. So, for example, if your device became unusable, lost, or stolen, you could simply order another one and use your backup phrase to restore that second device to regain access to all of your cryptocurrency that you had stored on your original device. So as long as you have that 24-word recovery phrase, you'll always be able to access your crypto no matter what. But if the unthinkable happens and you suddenly lose access to your cryptocurrency hardware wallet, the 24-word recovery phrase is not going to do you a lot of good if you need instant access. You'll probably need to order a new device and wait for that to get delivered to you. And that could be crucial time if you're in the middle of making important transfers. So, it's a good idea to have a secondary device already restored from your 24-word recovery phrase. So I'm going to show you how to implement this solution. A lot of people might be confused about why they need a backup. And just so you know, even if you lose both devices, as long as you have that 24-word recovery phrase, you can always restore your crypto to other devices. So I don't want you to think that you know, uh, you have one device and the backup, and what if something happens to both of them? As long as you keep your 24-word recovery phrase safe, you'll always be able to restore access to your crypto. That secondary mirror backup device is just a quick and easy replacement so that you can hit the ground running if anything happens to your go-to device. Now, if you're a first-time user and you've purchased the Ledger Backup Pack, you will need to get your go-to device unboxed, set up, and loaded up with crypto. But getting that done is a little beyond what I want to demo in this particular video, which is getting that backup configured. So I'm going to assume that you already have your device set up and you've already loaded some crypto on there. I've got a great video on setting up the Ledger Nano X from scratch, so I'll put a link to that up in the corner so that you can uh, get up to speed if you aren't there yet. But basically what I'd like to address is now that you've got your device set up, now that you've got your crypto loaded on there and you're managing multiple cryptocurrencies, how do you get this Ledger Nano X backup set up so that it becomes a mirror of your Ledger Nano X? So I'm going to walk you through that. All right, so uh, first I'd like you to kind of take a look at what I've got set up here. I might have more cryptocurrencies than the average user set up in my Ledger Live. You might just have a few like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a few ERC-20 tokens. 
or you may just have Bitcoin, right? You may have the easiest use case of all. You simply have one Bitcoin account and you want to have a mirror backup of your, of your device. But I'm going to uh, cover the case where you may be managing multiple cryptocurrencies. In this case, it looks like I've got about less than 10. So I'll cover that use case and uh, I'll talk about the simple case of just having a Bitcoin account as we go along. So it's easy to get confused, right? You've got your Ledger Live set up, you're managing multiple cryptocurrencies, and you want to create a backup device. Do I have to create new accounts or uh, do I have to do anything with my Ledger Live? Do I have to create separate accounts for the backup device? Uh, no, the answer is you don't have to do anything with Ledger Live. Ledger Live will stay intact. When we get our Ledger Nano S Plus set up and configured as the mirror device, we won't have to do anything to our existing Ledger Live or our accounts. But I am going to show you how to verify that this device is in fact set up properly. So in anticipation of that, I would like to show you how to verify your go-to device with a cryptocurrency account set up in Ledger Live. And it's pretty simple. I know that was a mouthful, but if we go into the account and we just wanna to check to make sure that this device is configured properly and that it matches this account, all we really have to do is hit receive here and continue. Uh, we have our device attached. All right, you'll notice that the, the device is asking me to open the Bitcoin app. I'll just hit both buttons to do that. And notice that the receiving address for this wallet appears on the device. And then it also appears on my screen in Ledger Live. This is a fail safe that will confirm that this device is matched with this account. And we can approve that and we're done. And we can just go down the line with this. We can use uh, this Polygon account, basically just do the same thing. We'll hit receive and continue. And notice that now my device wants me to open the Polygon app, All right? So I'll click both buttons to do that. All right, the interface is slightly different. It just wants me to verify the address. So I'll just click this button to advance to the next screen. And now it's showing me the address of this Polygon wallet on my device and in Ledger Live. We can eyeball it and see that it's the same. We'll click approve. And we can go down the line and do this for every account. Right. I'll just do one more to give you an idea. We'll go to the Stellar. We'll hit Receive, Continue. The device will ask me to open the Stellar app. I'll click both buttons. Right, And then I'll just advance over and look at that address. In the case of a Stellar address, it's a bit long, so it, sh it needs two screens. All right, But we can see that the address is showing up on the device and in Ledger Live. Now I could go down the line and do the same thing for every single account here in Ledger Live. But what I'd like to point out is that once we are done getting our Ledger Nano S Plus configured, we'll be able to do the exact same thing with the Ledger Nano S. In other words, Ledger Live will think that it's the exact same device. And in a mathematical sense, it is because both devices will be set up with the exact same master private key for managing the crypto. All right, so let's jump in. I'll show you what to do. Like I said, I'm assuming you've got your Ledger Nano X set up, and we're going to jump in and configure our Ledger Nano S Plus to be our mirror backup. Now, one of the most important things that we're going to need in order to do that is the 24-word recovery phrase that you wrote down when you set up your Ledger Nano X, right? Once we open the Ledger Nano S Plus, we don't need to write down any more recovery phrases because we're using the recovery phrase of our first device to configure our second device. All right, so here we are at the uh, setup. All right, so we've got the recovery phrase. We'll set it over here. We'll go ahead and get our Ledger Nano S open. All right, as I mentioned, the Ledger Nano S Plus comes with a recovery sheet. You do not need it. 
We're not going to be setting up the Ledger Nano S Plus as a brand new device. We're going to restore from an existing phrase. So you don't need to use this. You can set it aside. What we want is the recovery phrase from our Ledger Nano X. All right, so this is the welcome screen when we first turn on our Ledger Nano S Plus. So all we need to do is navigate using these buttons on the top. Uh, if you see this little arrow here, that indicates that there is more if we navigate over to the right. So we'll use the right side button and we'll just click there. It gives us some instructions on how these menus work using these buttons. And if we continue to scroll through, we get to this command, which says set up as new device. We are not going to do that today. We're going to restore this device using an existing 24 word recovery phrase. So we'll navigate past this to the next command, which is restore from recovery phrase. So once we get here, We'll click both buttons to activate this command. And the first thing it wants us to do is choose a pin. You have to choose at least four digits, but you can choose up to eight digits if you want. It's pretty simple. Just click both buttons and use the buttons to navigate up and down and choose the digit that you want for your pin. Once you've chosen the first digit, you'll click both buttons and move on to the second digit. Now, you do not need to use the same pin that you're using for your Ledger Nano X. It can be a different pin. The devices are independent of each other. We're going to be restoring the same master private key, but the pin does not need to match. So you can use the same pin or use a different pin as your go-to device. That's completely up to you. All right, once you've hit that last digit, you'll hit both buttons and they'll ask you to confirm the pin. Just re-enter the pin you chose the first time. All right, and then when you get to the end, you'll hit both buttons and now it wants us to enter our recovery phrase. Now this is going to require your full attention. It's a little bit tedious be because due to the size constraints of the device, we have a fairly small screen and we have no keyboard input. We only have the two buttons. So with those two constraints, it's a little bit difficult to type in words. We're going to have to enter them a letter at a time. You will need to focus your attention on this to make sure that you enter the same words that are on the card. Also, as you're entering these words, you'll want to make sure that you're on the right number. Notice that these words are numbered and you'll see the number on your device as well. So make sure that word number one matches before you move to word number two. We'll hit both buttons here. Uh, the first thing it wants us to do is select the number of words in the phrase. We'll hit both buttons there. We have 24 and that's the default. So we'll just hit both buttons there again. And now we need to start spelling out our word. So as you can see, the first word there is fatal. So I'm just gonna scroll over till I find the letter F. All right, and then I'll hit both buttons. And then uh, I'll go to my next letter, which is A. We'll hit both buttons, it's already there. All right, and then I need to scroll over to get to T. Now, notice that uh, after I chose the third letter that it's offering me the choice of the word fat as word number one. My word is not fat, so I'm notice the little arrow there telling me that there are more words available. So I'm going to scroll over until I find my word. But my word is fatal. Once I find my word, I hit both buttons. All right Now it's asking me to enter word two. Word number two is invite. So I'm just gonna scroll over to the letter I. And now I need to look for letter N. And now I can go backwards if I want to get to letter V. And it's displaying a word for me. Uh, it is not my word, right? So I need to scroll down until I find my word. And there it is, invite. Now that I've found my word, I'll hit both buttons. All right, then I go to my third word, which is state. I'll go over till I find the letter S, hit both buttons. And my second letter is T, so I'll go over till I find T. 
and then A, and then T again. Right, and this time my word shows up. I'll just hit both buttons. Notice that the word number appears at the top of your device, and it also appears on your card. So as you're going along, always confirm that the word that you're entering is the same number as the word that the device is requesting, right? They have this number uh, displayed along the top so you don't get confused and start entering the wrong word. So just continue along until you've entered your last word. Notice also that you have a backspace in case you enter a letter incorrectly. You can backspace and go back one. Also keep in mind that if you enter a word and move on to the next, and it turns out it was the incorrect word, once you've moved to the next word, you won't be able to go back. So you will have to start the process over from the beginning in case you accidentally complete a word and move on to the next and it's incorrect, you will need to start over. So uh, focus on what you're doing and try to make sure that each word is correct before you move on to the next word. But within the words, you can backspace. Notice that you may not even find your word at all because you've mistyped. If you get to the end of the list and you don't see your word at all, you can hit clear word and start over again. And just make sure that you check your list. See, this will take you back to the beginning of the word entry, and then you can attempt to start over again. All right, and once you hit uh, word number 24 and hit both buttons, it's going to take you to this screen where it tells you that the device is ready. Oh, we'll uh, advance over here. And then it says, go to dashboard. We'll click both buttons and we're at the dashboard. All right, so now we have the Legend Nano S Plus configured with the master private key of my Legend Nano X. These two devices are now matched. They are mirror backups of each other. But notice that on my Legend Nano S Plus, there were no apps. So in order to manage all of the cryptos that I have on my Legend Nano X, I need to make sure that I have every app for all the cryptos that I, that I own. So in the case of uh, someone that's just managing Bitcoin, we'll just need to uh, install the Bitcoin app. So like I said, notice my device is empty. So what I'm gonna need to do is go over to the manager and just take note of what I've got over here. So. We'll hit Manager. We're going to allow Ledger Manager by clicking both buttons. And then notice that uh, this is where we're going to install the apps. So notice that even though I've restored the device using my 24-word recovery phrase, it did not automatically install all of the same apps I had on the other device. That's my responsibility. So I'll start with Bitcoin. Right, And I just need to go down the line and look in my accounts and notice all of the cryptocurrencies that I have. And then just make sure that all of those apps are on my device. As you notice, I've got Ethereum here. I've got uh, Polygon and Stellar. So uh, let's go ahead and do those. All right, we'll do Ethereum, Polygon, and Stellar, right? I can click all three and uh, let them get queued up and wait for the device to install them. All right, and I can see the progress over on the device. All right, now I can go back over to accounts and go down a little bit and pick up where I left off. Polkadot, Algorand, and Litecoin. Go back over to manager, Polkadot, Algorand and Litecoin. All right, we'll go back over to accounts and just double check where we were. Cosmos, Digibyte, and Cardano. There's Cardano. There's Cosmos. 
And Digibyte's going to be way down here because it's kind of a small cap. But there it is. I can watch the progress on my device. And you can also hover here to see each app that's been installed on your device, like this. All right, we'll just go back over here. And it looks like we just have Solana and Zcash left over. There's Solana and Zcash. Okay. So, of course, your configuration is going to be different. You may own different cryptocurrencies than I do. But you can always do a double check just by uh, going over to the top. Right? And you can just look at your accounts in Ledger Live and just make sure you have a corresponding app on your device. Right? So there's Ethereum, there's Polygon, there's Stellar, there's Polkadot, Algorand, Litecoin, right? So just confirm that for every account that you're managing in Ledger Live, you have the corresponding app installed on your device. Now let's double check and make sure that this device is a match for each of these accounts. First, we'll go into Bitcoin. We'll do a receive, click continue, and it's asking us to open the Bitcoin app on our Ledger Nano S Plus. We'll click both buttons there, and there you go. The, the address shows up on the device and in Ledger Live. That lets us know that this device is configured properly. It is a mirror image of our Ledger Nano X. We'll just get out of that and click Approve. Done. If you hit that first one, you're probably good on the rest of them. But if you're a meticulous person, you might want to go through each one of these and just double check that they are also a match. But if you matched your, if they all match your Ledger Nano X, they should all match your uh, backup mirror device, the Ledger Nano S Plus. Right? And there we go. And we'll click Approve. And there we go. So we got our device configured correctly. It is now a mirror image of our Ledger Nano X device. Now we can take our Ledger Nano S Plus, disconnect it, and put it in a drawer for safekeeping in case anything happens to our Ledger Nano X. So you might have some questions. Uh, some common questions might be, uh, if I if I put some Bitcoin in this device, how will I get it onto this device, right? I get that a lot. The thing to remember is that these devices do not hold crypto. Crypto is stored on the blockchain. These devices are basically the keys that will unlock the wallets for you. So think of them as your car keys, right? You've got your set of car keys that you keep on your key ring, to uh, drive your car back and forth to work or the grocery store. And then you have a spare set that you may have in your dresser drawer. In case you lose your car keys, you'll have your spare set to hit the ground running, right? So these are basically just like your car keys, right? You've got your go-to set uh, for unlocking your car so that you can drive it. Or in this case, you can unlock your crypto wallets and manage them. And then if anything happens to this device, you've got this other device that uh, can unlock the wallets. So the question is, if I put crypto in this device, it will automatically be basically on this device as well because they're just keys that open existing wallets, right? So if you, have, if you put more Bitcoin in this wallet in Ledger Live, both devices will be able to manage it, right? Now, what if you get a brand new crypto that you've never had before, right? You buy a new crypto and you put it in your wallet. And so you're going to need to install the app for that new crypto on this device. So, for example, let's say you buy some Filecoin and you want to manage it on your Ledger Nano X. Uh, you'll install the Filecoin app. You'll go over to Accounts. You'll create a new Filecoin account. You'll get it set up. You'll put some crypto in there. And then you'll have a Filecoin wallet in Ledger Live. 
You won't need to do anything on this device except you will need to install the Filecoin app on this device so that it will also be able to manage the same wallet. But that's really the only thing you'll need to do, right? So when you make deposits in your crypto wallets, you don't need to make deposits in both of these devices. That's not really the way crypto works. These outer facing wallets that you see in Ledger Live are going to be uh, managed by both devices, right? So if you make a deposit in the Bitcoin wallet, both devices will be able to manage it. So now that you've got your uh, Ledger Nano X set up and you've got your Ledger Nano S Plus configured as the mirror backup, you've got safe and secure crypto storage. If anything happens to your Ledger Nano X, you'll simply pull out your uh, Ledger Nano S Plus from your dresser drawer and be up and running right away. That would give you plenty of time to order a new Ledger Nano X as a replacement if you need it. But in a pinch, you'll be able to start using your uh, mirror backup to manage your crypto right away if anything happens to your go-to device. So, and then, of course, you still have your 24-word uh, backup phrase in case both devices are damaged and you need to replace them, right? This is your ultimate backup. This is like the car invoice that the dealer can use to cut you a new set of keys. If you, if you lose your both sets of keys to your car, you can always go to the dealer, and he has the code to cut you new keys. That's what this guy is, right? This is the code that you need to cut yourself new cryptocurrency private keys if you ever need them, right? So if there's any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments, and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.